Um, <clears throat> so good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. And I know it's beer 30 for some people, but uh, not for some of us that are still trying to get our coffee down. Um, so on the agenda this morning, we have uh, the usual Hackfest planning. Uh, I think we've got um, uh, I thought Chicago was done deal. Didn't no, I just register for that? Sorry, I pulled that <laughs> from an old one. Let me update. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm looking at it and saying, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yep. Hang on. I think I registered for that. Anyway, so we have, uh, there right. You go. <laughs> um, Hackfest planning, then we have the uh, annual TSC election process, and Todd will remind us of the, the links for the proposals and all that kind of stuff. And for those of you who, um, for the process rather and those of you who are eligible to vote you should have received a, an email um and uh, so anyway todd will go over the process there and um and then dave uh Usby is going to make a proposal for setting up a, a new repository for educational materials sample apps and uh code snippets and stuff like that um, and he will also give us a security audit update and then uh, and, and, and talk about the security team. And then um, I'd like to have a discussion about starting a, a, a bit of a task force um, to look at how we're using GitHub and how we could use GitHub potentially for all the projects. Um, I, was, I was looking at it again last night in response to uh, Dave's request for the education materials repo and just thinking about, you know, again, a lot of the hurdles of using Garrett and so forth um, as a, a bit of a barrier to participation. And I guess uh, very recently that GitHub has added some new features to allow fine grained uh, control over who can, who, or who can or should be reviewing um, pull requests for particular parts of the code base, which actually is uh, better than what we can get with Garrett. So anyway, so uh, I'd like to just talk briefly about setting up a, a small task force to take a closer look at how each of the projects is using GitHub to see if we can't come up with a consistent approach for all of them. Uh, any other topics for the agenda? Okay, Todd. All right, uh, and really quickly, we are at quorum now. Um, all right, so in the Hackfest planning, I dropped two links in the window. Chicago Hackfest is confirmed. If you are attending, which we highly recommend, please register as soon as possible. Uh, also drop the draft agenda in there, any topics you'd like to discuss, um, connect with people on, looking at uh, further collaboration across projects and whatnot. Drop any thoughts into there. We'll run this on in unconference format, uh, as we always do. Onward from there, the Europe Hackfest uh, is looking very likely uh, 1028, 1029 in Berlin. Uh, Marta or Brian, if you're on, I want to add any more color there. But um, that's, that's what we're looking at right now. And we should have registration live for that uh, in the next couple weeks. Only that there is a sync up call between us and SAP on Friday. So we'll have more details and confirmation of uh, of the venue and everything else. Uh, unusually, it'll be over the weekend. Uh, we'll have a meetup on Thursday prior to the Hackfest. So if you'll want to uh, fly out a bit earlier, you'll most encouraged to do so. It'll be a very fancy um, venue for the meetup. Um, and uh, that's more or less it. It'll be fun. It'll be Berlin. Berlin is awesome. Great, thanks. Any other questions on Hackfest before we move on to TSC election? All right, uh, so we did collect uh, all the nominations over the past week uh, along the timeline. We received, I think it was 31 or 32, so really, really excited to see such healthy interest in uh, serving on the TSC. So shortly after this call, the election process will begin. I will send out an email to everyone that's eligible to vote in that election, uh, as well as uh, the list of all the candidates with their bios and pitches. 
uh, a unique ballot will be sent to each person. I'll send out a few reminders over the next week, and that will close next Wednesday at 5 p.m. And we will then announce the new TSC uh, on the TS uh, shortly before the TSC call. Uh, and then from there, we will open up the nomination and election process for TSC chair, which again will be one week nomination, one week election, and then we'll announce it on that TSC call. Any questions there? All right, so uh, onward to uh, Dave then and the repo for educational materials. Dave or Brian? Uh, I'm on. Um, okay, so the uh, Hyperledger uh, has contracted with um, an outside firm or outside people to create a MOOC for Hyperledger education. Um, part of that process is to develop sample applications for Fabric, Sawtooth, and Aroha um, that are loosely based on some of the examples from those projects. Um, they would like to store that code somewhere in a repo. And as discussed on the mailing list, um, Brian had some concerns that we should probably never create a repo that doesn't have an owner. And thankfully, you know, we've got people who are willing to volunteer to, to be maintainers of this repo. So um, anyway, I, I recommend that we set up a GitHub repo just for this kind of stuff um, because it won't be just this MOOC. It'll be, you know, other things in the future as well. So that's it. We just want to want a place to, to help storing educational materials and uh, so that we can manage that as an open source project. So I have a question. This is Arno. Uh, I mean, I think it's great that we have resources uh, being thrown in to help with education material. What I don't really understand is why this requires a new repo and how you see this coexisting with the efforts that are already underway in all the different projects. I mean, you said it to yourself. We have samples already, right? why not contribute to the existing repos to further develop what's there? I, I agree with that, Arno. The, the, the thing is, is that this is going to be an online, um, potentially online educational program. And so they want uh, to have files that are stable over time so that um, the text, you know, in the educational material will accurately reflect what is you know the, the the files that are available on online. I don't know, Brian. You were going to say something. It, yeah, um, this isn't intended to replace or compete with um, uh, samples that are being built by the development teams um, closely associated with the content. If I mean, it should hopefully complement it in the long term, and we can think long term about whether, say, sample code that's referenced by the training materials should belong in the projects or be maintained independently. I, I kind of like the idea of an example that is implemented across different frameworks so that you can see the differences between them, for example. Uh, but the actual uh, training content, which will be a mix of uh, text content and and uh, some videos, uh, you know, perhaps some other, um, you know, system images to for people to download as they're working their way through examples. Um, it's probably best to maintain that on a separate development track um, and have a consistency across. Um, it's so that's why we kind of approach this this way. Um, and and the proposal right now is just to create a repo so that everybody can see the work that's being done. We can start to version it. Um, and, and then we can decide long-term kind of, are, are, there, are there better homes for certain pieces of content? Um, and also long, uh, you know, kind of in the midterm, is it better to run this as a working group or as, a, as a, something that looks more like a software project? Um, so yeah, uh, intended hopefully just to complement what the projects are working on to address Arnold's point. Okay, and just to be clear, I, I don't, you know, I'm not worried about competition per se. It was more a matter of, you know, are, are we just going to spread the resources we have because now they are working on samples in for the education material in the repo there, and then they also have still to work on, you know, the samples for the different projects where they already engage. I and mean, when I see like Jonathan, God bless him, you know, volunteering to be a maintainer of the new repo, I'm like, oh shit you know, how is he going to find this time to do this? And is that going to take him away from working on fabric samples and education material? So I, that's the my concern, but, you know, I think he did also bring up some valid points. 
Yeah, and and also to address concerns about you know are we splitting or dividing efforts? You know everything will be CC zero licensed as content. All the code will be Apache licensed. So you know hopefully we can uh, you know make it easy to to move code code around and and content around and make everything additive rather than uh, duplicative. Yeah. So I mean I <clears throat> I think. Uh... I mean, what, what this does, though, especially when we think about code snippets and fragments, you know, they have to be tagged, uh, you know, or bound to a specific and released for a specific version of the software that they are targeting. And so there's coordination there. And then, you know, the concern is that, <clears throat> you know, if nobody is paying attention from, you know, Fabric or Sawtooth or Roja or Burrow or whatever to the samples that are in the educational material and they make a an API change or something like that, um, that this kind of thing would slip through the cracks because it's not formally considered part of what they're, uh, you know, obsessing about for getting a release out. Um, that would be my, that, that would be my one concern is, I mean, I, I think you know, I think if we had a work group around educational material that would try to provide a set of guidelines for uh, the kind of material that the Hyperledger community is looking to have consistently across the projects that it hosts and, you know, helping with providing, you know, the right sort of tooling and, uh, and or, you know, services or whatever that are necessary to host that kind of material and and produce it and so forth. I think that's that 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 would definitely be a good thing. Um, but then, you know, again, if if there's samples or if there's documentation, then it seems to me that that should really be, I think, the responsibility of the projects to keep up to date and consistent with their releases. I don't know if it sort of helps. What what we do? Because we have exactly this problem with with Corda, Corda as I guess every 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 code base does. We 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 distinguish between samples, documentation, and um and and, and other things that that we insist the developers keep keep in sync as as as, as new commits go in. So you, you can't get a pull request in if the associated documentation hasn't been added or updated, um, or if the the, the samples break. But then for education materials, which are obviously a much bigger investment and uh, they have to be, um, they, they're, they're refreshed less often, um, we align them to a particular release. Um, and, then in, and in those cases, we make it very clear to people that you know, for, this, for this training material, it may actually be one milestone behind, uh, but it's expected to last for, um, for, for a few months. And, and there isn't an expectation on the developers that they update the education, um, the, 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 the formal education as they, as they, as they, as they update and, and add to the code. Um, but it does mean that the education sometimes lags the, um, the, 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 the latest updates in the code base. And the way we fix that is to at least make it possible that you can update the, the education subsequently is, is we insist, I guess, like as all code bases do on very clear release notes and, and change logs so that when we're reviewing the education, we've got somewhere to go, at least as a starting point to figure out what needs to be updated. Uh, but I agree with you, it's, it's, it's got to be thought about carefully and I'm not sure we get it completely right, but that's just one approach. You know, now that you have, uh, you've all brought this up, um, I'm kind of being convinced otherwise. I think it might be wiser to keep this material for each project in the repos for each project, because then that really opens up the possibility of doing, um, you know, if you do a new commit and we do a CI pass on it, one of the CI passes is, or steps in the CI pass is to run through the, you know, the scripts for the education material to make sure right. that it still works, right? And so you can right. see if you actually broke, you know, the, the link between what the educational material says and what the source code does. Um, that's my main concern is that they need to stay in sync. And, you know, I don't know. That, I think that makes more sense to break it up and put it in there. And my point earlier of the online materials needing to be linked to a specific version, right? They want it to be stable over time. Well, that's easy, right? You can just link to that specific tag or revision of that file uh, in the repo. So, right. 
Well, I, 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 I still think I, I still think there's a need for an independent repo, as there was content being created that is um, hyperledger non-specific. That is, I mean, it's not particularly to a project; it's generic across the project. Uh, things like kind of an intro to enterprise blockchain kind of content. Um, I, I also so so for, at least for that, we should create either a training or education repository, and if we want to formalize it with a working group, I'm all for that as well. Um, but I, I do also want to make, I believe pretty strongly in the Unix philosophy of small pieces loosely joined. Um, and I, um, you know, keeping everything in sync is a, is a terrific ideal. Uh, I don't want that to come at the cost of somebody feeling like if they want to add a feature or fix um, the behavior of something, they've got to touch 20 different places to, to, to you know, to make that move forward. Um, uh, so I, I I'm sympathetic to all things, but I think at the very least we should just get started with a, a repo, start putting things in there, and then let us figure organically out uh, it, where we're the appropriate place for certain samples and certain demo content. That might be. Oh, yeah, my two cents on that. I think I, I agree, and I think I think it will be useful. So it's it's good to have a top level kind of educational stuff that is 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 not project specific. I think it's going to be useful to reuse maintainers, right? So if you already have maintainers that know the code and can make sure that things make sense, they should be the same maintainers that will actually try to help and make sure that the sample stuff works, which is similar to what they said, what Richard mentioned. And we, we should always link to, to a version. Even if we have an online class, we could say this is Fabric 1001, you know, otherwise we will not be able to be forward compatible. So yeah, my two cents. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, you know, linking and targeting a specific version is great, but then again, these things are going to be moving pretty fast. It's not like, you know, I'm sorry about the dog. Um, you know, it, it's not. Gretel! <laughs> I felt worried for making coffee. I didn't want to make noise. <laughs> Um, it, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not like they're all standing still. And, and, you know, again, I think that, you know, the, the point that, that, you know, I was on and that I think Dave sort of re, you know, reiterated is that, you know, I think it's important that we make sure that these things do stay in, sync, in, in some sense of sync with one another. And so I'm, I'm all for, you know, sort of there being, general education material on what's a blockchain, how do they work, what's a Merkle tree, all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, when we drill down into the specifics that we're actually linking to the maintained set of samples and versions and things that, uh, and documentation, I should say, for the various projects and just try to build a certain uh, consistency across the, the presentations maybe just so that it, it, again it feels a little bit more like a community effort but hi this is uh, I, I think we can work through that uh, you know I, again I think having a repo for the top level stuff to start with it's good and then I think when it comes time to figure out where samples and so forth go that we can collaboratively work with the different teams but in terms of ownership uh, Dave, you, you said you, I mean, I know Jonathan stepped forward in the email, but who else? Um, so we were going to ask uh, Robert, one of the main um, guys producing the uh, educational material, um, if he would like to be a maintainer. Um, uh, even after the contract, we were going to ask for that. And then I think we were just going to call for volunteers, people who have shown an interest in this stuff, maybe somebody from a working group or something, um, and see if we could get a few more lined up. And, and Tracy is still on vacation, but um, this is something I'll expect our community architects to be doing. So um, uh, she'll be she'll be on that too. Okay. That's right. I forgot about that part. <laughs> so Vip okay. wanted to say something. I think. In fact. Uh, this is Vipin. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you brought forward a good point that um, since it's an overarching repo, maybe the working group's, uh, uh, you know, outputs could also be part of this repo, and um, that that would add to the um, value of the educational material. Maybe uh, the working groups is where uh, you know outputs is where you tie the different projects together. 
and then have links in them to specific projects, uh, you know, and be able to uh, look at it from a different perspective, like from the architecture or the identity or uh, the performance. Um, and so, so, on. so, yeah, Vipin, I, I think I agree, and I, you know, the 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 the, the thought that's for me in my head is that this is really a project. And just like, you know, we were discussing a couple of weeks ago in terms of, uh, or actually I guess it was maybe about a month ago now in terms of the relationships, um, you know, the interrelationships between projects or the dependencies and so forth that um, we really, I think, would want to run this as a project within Hyperledger, uh, you know, formal project to educate people about blockchain and. Uh, you know, and also about our, our respective uh, projects and um, and so forth, but that as a result, that it really does need to have formal. You know, it 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 needs to have you know, just like fabric or sawtooth or burr or any of the others, it, um, it it needs people to be responsible for it, and then it needs to be making sure that it's. Uh, interacting with the other projects accordingly to make sure that there's broad agreement, you know, it's got a, uh, you know, the educational materials, you know, that talk about what a blockchain is should probably review with the architecture working group and the various um, top level projects to make sure that there is agreement that the material is correct and so forth. So um, I guess Brian and, and Dave, I guess I'm sort of suggesting that maybe what we need is a formal project proposal. I don't have a problem setting up the repo for now, but I, I think we probably do want to make sure that we have, and then just like with all the others, that there's reporting and so forth to make sure that it's still vibrant. Well, there was a good point in chat that the white paper working group repo was approved to move over to GitHub. And why doesn't, why don't we use that as the starting point? Because that gives us already maintainers. It's already a project. And then they could just work with the white paper working group to get the educational material uh, folded mm -hmm. into that repo. That might be an easier sell, I think. Or, or not to worry too much about semantic overloading. Let, let's do this. Let's create a, a, a repo now so we can start loading content. Let's come back next week with a proposal for a corresponding working group that will have ownership on that repo. And I really think the white paper working group and other working groups should also have repos as they see fit, as they see need. So, I mean, repos are cheap to create. We don't want thousands, but, but having one-to-one -one correspondence between that and our other organizational structures is completely fine, in my opinion. Um, so uh, could we could we do that? Um, I'm supportive, certainly. Do we need a? I don't think we need a. Well, I guess to set up the repo, we probably should just take a quick vote. So Todd, you want to just sort of run through the list? yeah, sure. I'll run through the list quickly. Arno, yes. Ben, yes. Chris, yep. Greg, yes. Hart. Yes. Mick? Yes. Morali? Yes. Richard? Yes. Shehan? Yes. All right, so that passes. Okay. Great, and we'll come back next week with a proposal for a, tra a working group with a set yeah. of named uh, participants in that group. Excellent, thank you. Dave, you're up again. <sighs> Thank you, and thanks for that. I'll take that as marching orders, and we'll get on the working group stuff right away. Um, okay, uh, so quick security team update. We have formed our security team. I have volunteers from Fabric, Sawtooth, Roja, and Burrow. I'm seeking volunteers from Indy and all of the other projects, uh, Composer um, primarily. Um, so. We have mailing lists. We have um, confidential bug handling in JIRA and a way to report them. And currently, we have an outside firm called Netitude conducting a um, security audit of Fabric. Now, so far, they, they haven't found anything, but they are just starting to dig into the meat of it. Um, and the plan is, is that they will report security issues to the security team as they find them to give us a chance to fix them before 
they report out. Um, they won't report out if they find something the day before. They're going to wait until we fix stuff before they uh, make any public. You know, they'll make a confidential report to us, but not publicly. And then uh, the plan is that they will send people to attend the Chicago Hack Fest, and there will be a presentation by Netitude on their methods and results and um, yeah, what we did to fix all those things and harden the platform. So anyway, I just wanted to keep you guys uh, caught up on the security front. Um, things are moving along nicely. Any questions? All right, sounds good, Dave. Great. All right, so the last item on the agenda is um, you know, in response to Dave's request, as I mentioned earlier, to, you know, create a, a, a GitHub repo um, and, you know, talking about, you know, how, you know, reviews and stuff would be conducted. Um, you know, I, I started taking an, another closer look at, at GitHub in terms of, uh, you know, how it can manage, um, uh, you know, pull requests. I, I, I don't think that it, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, can we support, you know, sort of a two plus two um, uh, and non-author code reviews. I'm still not, you know, quite positive that it, it does that explicitly. Uh, you can be very uh, fine-grained and, and uh, establishing, you know, who is responsible for what parts of the code base, which is actually something certainly in a project as sprawling as some of the projects we have. Um, could actually be a good thing to help sort of give people a solid footing of, you know, what parts of the code they're responsible for and ensuring that there's reviews and so forth. Um, and, but, you know, again, I'm still not clear, you know, how are we, um, you know, tracking to make sure that, uh, you know, part of CI is checking to make sure that there's a sign off for the DCO and, and so forth, various other aspects that, we currently have Garrett checking for and enforcing, um, and at least for Fabric. I know not everybody's in Garrett. I understand that, um, but um, you know, again, one of the consistent pieces of feedback we get is, uh, "Oh my God, Garrett sucks." You know, <laughs> um, we get that even from the people that are in the project. Uh, but um, uh, thanks, Mike. Uh, I'll have to check on that. I didn't see it as a plugin, so I, I know I have my little stupid bot, but I'll have to see if I can find that one. Um, yeah, that's what I was going to point out to when you were done, is that they do have DCO stuff now. Okay, good. Um, and so, uh, you know, again, and we have, you know, so, you know, the other thing we have, of course, is that we have, and I've, I've heard this feedback as well, is that, you know, there's multiple projects at Hyperledger, but they all use different forms of uh, governance, and it's hard to understand how you know how to engage and, and and work with them all because they're all so different. And so, I thought maybe the thing that we should do is set up a task force working group. I don't know what you want to call it. I think it's just short term, kind of a thing right now to um, uh, to to look at. Okay, so if we were to adopt GitHub across the board for all projects, what would we have for a consistent approach to enforcing DCO, you know, uh, code reviews and so forth? Um, Branching that models. We all agree to, um, or at least agree to a set of guidelines that we are consistently applying across the projects, even if they're not all identical, um, so that it makes it easier for people who engage to move from Fabric to Sawtooth to Burrow and so forth. And also for the various projects to be a little bit more collaborative in how they um, they work across uh, and and uh, and between each other. So um, I'd be interested in sort of taking you know taking volunteers to come and and work with me and looking at this over the course of the next few weeks. I'm I'm on vacation uh, the end the last week of uh, of August, but um, I'm certainly willing to start looking at that over the next few days. Chris, I volunteer. I'll jump in. Um, I'd also like us to 
at least take a moment to revisit the branching model stuff. I don't want to dig up old corpses, but if we are going to move to GitHub, <laughs> if this, we can this, include that as part of it, I, 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 yes. I, um, I like to see what other projects are doing and so forth. But yeah, of um, course. But this gives us a good opportunity. I mean, our main objection to the proposal was Garrett, right? You yeah. know. So if we're going to move to GitHub or seriously consider it, we could see if that is a, a reason to do it. You know. Uh, anyone else? This is Arno. I'm actually interested in this too. How about somebody from Sawtooth or Burrow or one of the other projects that are out there using currently using GitHub? So I'd like you know input from from those teams so that we get a better appreciation for how the other teams are using. So currently, Fabric is the only project using Garrett, right? Yep. Yeah. Well, uh, Fabric and uh, Cello. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I mean, to get Composer and, you know, not getting a lot yeah. of all here. All right. What I'll do is I'll send a note to the mailing list and if we get some more names back, I realize that it's the doldrums of summer and we don't have a full contingent here, but um, I'd like to get that off the ground and maybe come back to the TSC with a proposal for what a set of guidelines would be for all projects to adopt as they, uh, you know, come on board and that the pro existing projects can work towards over some period of time. I wouldn't expect a cold turkey kind of thing, but. I do think it would be good to have consistency across the project. And quite frankly, it seems like, you know, the expectation was the choice had been made to switch to Garrett and Fabric did it and the others were expected to do the same. And then there was this kind of like passive aggressive <laughs> attitude of like, no, thank you very much. And so, you know, maybe that's the way to get back to all on the same boat. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, I know from talking to Dan, uh, you know, his feel was that the decision to go to Garrett was by fiat rather than by by vote, and I, d I certainly don't recall a vote for for using Garrett as the base for it. Um, and I think each project has come out of some culture behind, and I think that that we've brought those cultures in here, and um, it's certainly a good idea to re-examine where we're at and what the process would be used to see if we can make some consistency to it. And and I wouldn't hold up consistency as the overriding objective. I think developer productivity uh, multiplied by <laughs> legal legal coherence, so that's the DCO kind of side, um, is really the, the thing to optimize for. And and there's many paths to developer productivity. You know, a better way to explain to new users how to become contributors is, uh, you know, just as just as important, I think. I second Brian here because um, Hyperledger being an umbrella project, the umbrella should shelter different ways of working, and it should be. Uh, Pretty much, as long as you know the methods chosen are not uh, completely antithetical to sharing and to the whole uh, legal um, infrastructure, that uh, you know we should be able to use any methods to do this. And GitHub, of course, is a very uh, widely used tool. Whereas Garrett, I, I get the feeling that it's not as widely used. GitHub. Oh, yeah. That <laughs> yeah. Barrier to entry is a big deal for open source projects. And by using <laughs> GitHub, you know, I, I think a lot of new or people new to Hyperledger will just go, oh, great, it's on GitHub. You know, it, that'll be one less thing that they'll have to overcome to become a, a contributor to the project. And as for like complex behaviors, um, I, I have been heavily involved in several projects in the past um, and I still am like the Rust language, they have a very complicated, I wouldn't say complicated, but they have a sophisticated bot that integrates with GitHub that enforces their review policies and their merging policies and all that kind of stuff. So um, 
if we do decide to go to GitHub, but there is a feature that doesn't exist, I know that it's not impossible to add it. So um, anyway, just thought I'd throw that out there. Yeah, look, look, you know, there are pros and cons, right? Like what, what happened when we started working with Garrett, at the beginning, honestly, I, I was under the impression that we have to move to Garrett. I don't know why. Somebody told me, look, let's just do it. And I tried it out and it was not that bad. You know, you have to get used to it. It, it, took, it took some time to set up, but it's okay. Uh, a nice feature that you have in Garrett, just, just very quickly, is that you can have an inline uh, kind of comment, right? I can highlight a piece of code and I can say, hey, what is this character? Is this extra? Which I couldn't do in GitHub. At the same time, and I suffer from dyslexia, I can always edit my reviews in GitHub, something that I cannot do in Garrett, right? So it really, it's kind of preference. Uh, I, I, th I never had anyone complaining about GitHub, you know? So some people didn't, I, I don't mind Garrett, I like Garrett actually, but people that didn't like a tool never complained about GitHub because that, that's kind of, it, it's considered kind of de facto kind of tool today, right? So every developer student is like trying to do yeah. something. But it's, it's also something. well understood and well known that for large projects, it sucks. Now it's getting better, but it still sucks. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you know, the fact that the fact that there can't be one issues that transcends uh, uh, a set of repositories, that sucks. Right. right. And, 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 and to have dependencies, we have this nice dependency graph, right? So I can approve a few things and then I say, hey, Chris, Gary, can you take a look at that? I don't want to approve it completely. And then we merge it only when everything is ready, right? So we can stack them up and have a dependency between six issues with different specialities, right? Different familiarities with code. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. So this is Greg, uh, you know, from my perspective, uh, you know, I've done a lot of Linux kernel contributions in the past and everything's done at least back when I was doing it on LKML and and people send a patch into the, the mailing list and then people respond to the patch in the mail, you know, in line with, with inline comments and then <laughs> submit it back and the patch is refined. And that's yeah. really what Garrett is promoting. The So the old, the one thing I ran into that was awkward with the old GitHub model, and maybe it's fixed, was that if you have that iterative process, which is what big projects tend to do, uh, like kernel and the way fabric is becoming and whatnot, is that it, it is iterative. And until until that's a smooth process, it makes it really awkward for the both the submitters and maintainers to manage it. So I, yeah. I just want to make sure that's addressed. No, so I, GitHub I, actually GitHub actually supports this, right? So I. I do maintenance for the Rust uh, tool chain. And uh, when I submit a patch and I put it out for review, they'll comment on GitHub. And then I will take those comments and make the changes in my branch, right? And then I'll push the branch again back into my fork of the code, right? In my, yeah, my personal fork on GitHub. And it will yeah. actually update, it'll see that, and it'll update the pull request automatically. And it'll not only show what I changed, but it'll mark and notify everybody else that have commented on that change that I have made a change. And then that sort of signals to them that, hey, come back and take another look at it, right? So the, it seems to be a much cleaner flow now. The, yeah, problem is, the, the problem is it doesn't, the, at least historically, back when Fabric was on GitHub, it doesn't work well. And they're set in from the perspective of like, you know, projects like LKML don't want you to submit a, a history of changes to the patch. They want you to submit the patch in its final form as a, as reviewed and accepted. So in the GitHub model, when you wanted to do that, what you ended up having to do was do a force push to your branch to actually update it in place as opposed to make a new patch on top. And that's awkward and that's that's you know generally against Git best practices. And the alternative is like, well the git flow model is to to squash your patch your branch all down to a single repo or a single revision before uh, sure. merging and we can build a bot to enforce that right, right. if That's we do that that would solve the problem right and and i am but you know to the to the point of sort of addressing uh, you know comments and so forth uh, i did note that there have been some improvements made there um, there's a an add-on, a plugin that you can get that actually tracks the comments, and then you actually have to check them off um, uh, when they're addressed and so forth. So, um, uh, you know, there there may, like I said, I, I think it it's getting better. It's not necessarily getting worse, um, but I, I, you know, I, I I think that we should evaluate where we are, and uh, certainly from a fabric perspective, I'd like to take a look at at all of this um but you know just from a 
somewhat of a consistency perspective, I think it'd be nice if the projects were all using uh, consistently and that we're making sure that we have DCO and, and so forth all covered and part of sort of the required, um, you know, minimum required to declare victory when you're setting up a, a repository. That makes sense. Yeah, the other the other comment I would make too is if we're going to um, you know look at Dave's branching suggestions, you know we we need to relax the limitations we have around maintainers managing the branches. I think if we want it to be sane. Yeah. In, in what sense do you, do you want to limit the number? I was thinking of limiting the number of branches a little bit so that we have sub sub branches that are relatively fixed, not not like fifty. Because no, that's fine. that's. A, I, I I agree with that too. In fact, that, the way things are going right now is that branches are 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 you know, not in favor of current you know kind of like the continuous integration model of things. Right. You right. Really want That's right. Um, so we want we want few branches, but if we're going to have branches, I'm just suggesting that having maintainers be able to actually merge between branches and push those merges back would go towards the problems that we have now, which is that you know nobody can push merges out, so it's right. really awkward. Right, and, and so we just have to address that. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree. And, and but you know, to your point on CI, um, uh, you know, the way we have Jenkins set up, basically, it's looking at a branch and responding to that. And if we just turn it over and let anybody create branches willy nilly, then it gets a little bit out of control there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I think. If I we go to GitHub, then the need is reduced because GitHub more naturally supports the the Git flow, right? Like where I, for me to contribute, my first step is to fork the project. And then if I have a, a, a branch that I create for a feature and I'm working with several other developers, they just <clears throat> fork off of my repo and we all collaborate on my repo. And then when we submit to the main project, it goes as a single pull yeah. request. Dave, right. that means you have to set up CI on your repo, and how yeah. do you set CI on my form? No, 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 you don't. You don't because you just. I mean, the the model is you don't have a branch, a feature branch that lives forever. It's you know, it's a sniper's bullet. It's usually just a small thing, a, a, a sort of a separate environment for us to try something out, right? I think that's the understanding. Yes, yes, no, the, the problem is the the following, right? You have the the, the kind of the Golang kind of build that passes, and then you can have some tests. But we have a very custom kind of setup, right? So we have different tests and integration tests and all that stuff. That's what, why Chris is asking you, did, like, how, how are you going to build that custom CI for your branch? Because you have to link to it somehow, right? So if it's on your own fork, you are not connected to our Jenkins. If it's like a, a formal branch, and we push to that branch before we integrate to the kind of, you know, not master, but the main trunk. Then, then the CI will kick in. Yeah, if, that if, makes if, that to, that totally makes sense. We're not arguing. That's exactly what I have in mind. Sure. So you'd have like an integration branch that's actually in the main repo, and that's where you know feature branches that are developed off into other people's forks. You know, when they come in as pull requests, they'll get staged in this integration branch, yes. and that will yes. trigger CI, and then we can. That, that, you know, that's why I'm project. offering. Yeah. That's why I'm offering the the, 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 the the select set of branches that we know that are going to be the integration before we go to the main trunk. And then we can have the CI link to this, but you don't check into them like every, you know, every 10 minutes. It yeah, just went exactly. With the, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that, I mean, that was in the branching model that I had originally proposed. But yeah. I think we're getting off track. I think we're getting off track on this one. I, I think we should get back to whether we should investigate GitHub or not. Yep. So I... I Hi, right, this, is, this is Leonard. I just want to say quickly, if you are going to stick with GitHub, could we start documenting a set of how to as best practice methods for use of GitHub across all the projects so we get that, you might say, alignment and synergy in the use of the tool in the best ways that some of us can recommend. Um, that's if we are going to stick with GitHub. That's all I wanted to add. Yeah. All right. Well, I've got some names, um, you know, ping me on, uh, you know, Rocket Chat or whatever if you're interested. And um, I, I don't know, uh, maybe we should just make it a, a working group task, you know, slash task force or whatever, Brian, as you suggest. I don't think we ever had a mailing list or anything, um, but maybe I could work with Rye to have one set up just so that we 
some of the traffic? Um, I, I think a working group is a very good way forward because we can certainly use that to look at every tool that we have um, controversy around the start of GitHub to find the best methods, best ways of using things. And that's all part of the process and the efficiency within an organization. All right. Can we, so, uh, can, hey Chris, can I just, I'd like to counter that actually. Can we just think of this as a task force or a strike group with the very explicit goal of producing a, a recommendation one way or the other um, in a yeah. very short time? I don't think we need a formal working group for this. This isn't something we should chew on for a long time. Yeah, I think I, we can yeah, revisit I, this in the future, but I think we should have a very specific goal and it should be something we get, get through very quickly. I agree. I, I agree. I mean, we could use the, you know, the technical or the whatever mailing list if if that's okay with people, or we could set up a separate one. I'm 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 in favor of either one. I don't really care. I'll get all the traffic anyway. So. I'm not hearing any <clears throat> keen interest. Okay, so we'll use the technical. Sorry, we'll use the technical. Um, list. I'll send out a note, kick off the thread, and um, uh, see who's interested, and then we'll take it from there. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll, uh, unless there's any other items, I'll give people 10 minutes back. <laughs> All right. Have a nice one. See you later. Thanks. Thanks, Bye -bye. Chris.